Today we're going to be looking at this Apesa SSD. It's NVMe based, it's Gen 3 by 4 and it should run at around about 3000 megabytes per second or 2000 on the right. On the front of the box it tells you the manufacturer's name, it also says M.2 PCIe Gen 3 by 4 SSD, it's got the model number as well and it's got a nice cutout on there so you can see the SSD through the window. On the back of the box it doesn't really give you much information in all honesty, it's multilingual and it basically just says what it says on the front with a few warnings, a QR code for a manual and otherwise that's pretty much it. It doesn't mention anywhere though on the box the speed which we found out from the website is 3000 megabytes per second on the read and 2000 on the right. Inside the box all you've got is a plastic case with the SSD and otherwise that's it, no manual, no paperwork, anything like that which is pretty good. So let's look at the SSD itself. Well, first of all, the size of it is 2280, which basically means it's your standard size of SSD, which fits in pretty much most things. Obviously, if you might need a micro size, then this isn't for you, but this is your traditional size, what you'll find most NVMe or M.2 based SSDs usually are. It's got a, what looks like a label across the top, which isn't a heat sink. Some models of um, SSDs we've come across over the years do have built-in heat sinks it's where it's only a usually a small sheet across the top this doesn't mention anywhere on the website if it is or not so I'm taking that it's not you've got the serial number there obviously the screw hole there and obviously you've got your pins at the end which is your traditional layout for NVMe the back is pretty straightforward there's not much to see there Okay, so we've installed the SSD inside this NZXT case. You can just about see it roughly there. So it gives you a rough idea what it'll look like in your PC. But in most cases, your NVMe slot may be directly under where you put your graphics card. So you may not see it anyway inside your case. Depending on where it is in your case as well, will mean it will get a different amount of airflow. So if it's under the graphics card, it may not get as much airflow and potentially could get hotter. But if you have it further down on your board, if you have got slots and they do run at the right speeds and so forth, it can potentially run cooler because it gets more airflow. But again, this drive shouldn't, in theory, get too hot, but we'll test that in a few minutes. First of all, what we're doing is testing-wise, we're using a program called Eurosoft PC Check UEFI. This is a professional program. It's not one of these free ones you get online. It will cost you a few hundred quid to get hold of it. Um, this program is designed for computer engineers. A lot of your big system integrators like uh, Dell's, HP's and a lot of these places where what build lots of computers in bulk also use this software to check the machines to make sure they're working fine. You can check pretty much every single component in the machine using this software. So it's sort of like an industrial scale testing program. And we're testing the SSD at the moment. We're doing a quick test, which is 30 minutes long, which I'm presuming it will pass. And then we'll do a 48 hour test as well as a stress test to make sure that there's no complications when you're using it for long periods and it doesn't just suddenly cut out and reboot the machine or anything like that. So we're giving it some thorough testing. Okay, so we've done some speed tests on the actual drive itself, and as you can see here, using Crystal Disk Mark, we actually got on the read 3,572 megabytes per second, which is a lot faster than the 3,000 they're quoting on their website, and the write speed as well is far greater than what it says on the website. The website says 2,000 megabytes we're getting 3,200. Again, these are what we class as synthetic tests. They're not obviously real life experiences, but it gives you a good rough idea what the max potential is. Now, using Atto, we did similar test. Again, on the read, we were getting up to about 3.3 gigabytes a second, which is really good. And the write, again, was going up to about 2.9 gigabytes per second. Again, a lot higher than what was quoted. If you're interested in the IOs, they were going on the reads at around about 170,000 and 158 on the right, just to give you a rough idea. So otherwise, all I can really say is we highly recommend it. We get better results than it says on the website. Uh, the only thing it doesn't say is 
there's information on the box which I would suggest they actually add on there because that would put me off buying a product if it didn't tell me how fast it is on the box. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think and we'll see you next time.